Hi, for this recording, I'm going to show you how to prove that the function f of x equal to x squared cosine of 1 over x, where x not equal to 0, and x equal to 0 for x equal to 0, is continuous at the point x equal to 0. Now to do this, I'm going to use a rule called the squeeze rule. Let's look at the statement of the squeeze rule first. Right. So the statement of the squeeze rule says that if f, g, h are defined on an open interval i, and c is a point inside the point inside the interval i, and g of x is less than or equal to f of x, less than or equal to h of x for x belong to i, and g of c equal to f c equal to h of c, and g and h are continuous at c, then we say then we know that f is continuous at a point c. Okay, so now let's go back to our solution now. I'm going to show you how to do the solution. So let's define an open interval first, contain the point zero. So I'm going to let i be the interval from minus infinity to infinity. So that the point zero is inside the interval i. Now our function is actually for x not equal to 0, we know that cosine of 1 over x is between 1 and minus 1, as long as x not equal to 0. So now, I multiply by x squared. Since x squared is not equal, it's, not, it's always positive, so inequality will be unchanged. So x squared cosine 1 over x will be let less than x squared and greater than minus x squared. Okay, so we know that for x not equal to 0, we have minus x squared less than or equal to f of x for an x squared. Now, however, what happens when x equals 0? We also know that f of 0, we know is 0 as given by the question Right, f of zero is zero. Therefore, f of zero is also satisfy the inequality that is f of zero also less than or equal to zero square, greater than or equal to minus zero square. So combine together. Okay, combining this fact for x not equal to zero and this fact. Then we have f of x will be less than or equal to x squared greater than minus x squared for x belong to i, which is from minus infinity to infinity. Now open interval from minus infinity to infinity. So we have established the first fact. I'm going to call them, let's call them gx equal to minus x squared, hx equal to x squared. So this is actually to agree with the statement of the squeeze rule. I have g and h defined on open interval. Now the second step, right? So I have actually show you the first step, which is correct. Okay, I actually show you that the first step I have, this is true, I have an open interval, now I'm going to show you the second condition, the condition actually, fc equal gc equal hc. So let's go back and continue. So the c, the point c is equal to 0 now. Our point of interest is the point x equal to 0. Right? Our point of interest is the point x equal to 0. So all I need now is the, another condition, is now g of 0 is 0 square minus 0 square is 0 h of 0 is 0 square f of 0 as given is also 0 you can see that f of 0 is 0 right f of 0 is 0 as given so happen that so g of 0 is equal to f of 0 equal to h of 0
All right? So I have managed to show you a few conditions. All right? So number one is this thing. First condition for the squeeze rule. Second condition for squeeze rule. And the third condition for squeeze rule and g and h are continuous function at zero since gx and hx are continuous. Right? So when you look at the statement again, so we say that g and h are continuous at the point C. So we know g and h are actually continuous function. Right, so you know that G and H are actually continuous function, so they are continuous at the point C. So they are continuous at zero. The point C is zero. So another condition are satisfied because as they are polynomial, right? As G H are polynomial, and we know polynomial are continuous function as G X H X. Are polynomial. So in this case, all the condition for quick squeeze through are satisfied. So conclusion f of x is continuous at x equal to zero by the squeeze through. This concludes the solution of this problem. All right. So the function is continuous at the point zero by setting up inequality and showing that the function is, is agreed at the point and they are all continuous at that point. Well, g and h, and then we make a conclusion. That's the end of this recording.